this what I'm going to show you is literally a spiritual being of the host oh, who is in the royal guard. He is a member of the royal guard, and he's actually over the army that was sent to me. And yes, my husband was with me when he was sent. Now, this is a close-up. I have rarely ever show this picture. We do have a picture of him in the calendar, but it is not a close-up. I know some of you are about to freak out for the first time in your life. You're going to see a member of the Royal Guard that is under Michael, the Archangel, who is over the Army of Heaven. And um, he does look like a lion, as you will clearly see. So here he is. I didn't know we'd be having picture showing time, but show and tell. We're having show and tell in the Q&A. So uh, I don't have my little pointer with me, so you know, I'm probably going to have to use my finger. And this is his face. It is a profile right here. You see his face? His forehead is up here. Here's his eyes. His long mustache. It's a very long mustache. This is his beard, and on the end of the beard, right there, that little blue thing, that is an eye. And I told you they were strange. I am not talking about earth. I'm talking about heaven that has many different creatures. You know, in Revelation 4, where it talks about the living creatures, there's many different creatures in heaven. The living creatures are around the throne itself. He is not the living creature, but he looks similar to one of them. He actually has eyes. This whole entire... A patch on the side of his head are eyes. He also has the eye that's down here. I hope you can see it where my finger is pointing. This is a rift. I'm going to say I call it a rift. This deep blue is looking into heaven. He came out of this deep blue area. The sky was very pale that day. My husband was with me, but he came through a rift in the spirit realm into the physical realm. This is not a cloud. This is literally a spiritual being. You can see even the hair on his mane because he is like a lion. And he's very powerful in rank in heaven's army. So when you see these in the clouds, you're going to know heaven is watching over you. They're doing more than watching over you. They expect us to send them on assignments. We get blasted all the time. Let it go. God created them for us. And they need orders from headquarters which is Christ in us, right? Christ is the Lord of hosts. And so here they are. Here's a literal one right here. Maybe you've seen it for the first time. I hope you enjoyed this. If you want to see more, you can get this calendar that I just showed you. That might be the only one we show, but it is such an amazing, shocking print of a literal being that came from heaven. Heaven is real. The place your family members, when they have moved there, they are living a literal life in their spiritual body. Don't worry about them, okay? You run your race. So another question. This is why Q&As take okay. so long. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is from Trudy, and she's, it's kind of a long one. She said, can the spirit hang around for three days before they go to heaven? I heard that before, but the word says, that absent from the body is to be present from with the Lord. But is that right away, or can they hang around a few days because some has passed away and was raised from the dead? I understand up to three days later. So this is who's asking this very long question? Trudy. Trudy. Well, what she means, uh, just so you understand, she's talking about someone who lived on the earth and died. Can their spiritual body hang around for a while once they have died? And it does say to be absent from the body. I'm not going to take all the time to explain to this, but when you die, your physical body dies. Your spiritual body inside this physical body looks just like you, but young. You look amazing. So when this body, this flesh dies out of it at the very moment you stop breathing and your natural physical heart stops, your spiritual body steps out of this body. It is a literal body. It doesn't even know. This person doesn't even know they've died, by the way, because they can still touch yourself, feel yourself, and uh, until they look down and see their actual body laying, and they go, oh my goodness, I guess I have died. Uh, their angel is right there with them, waiting to escort them to heaven, unless Jesus has come himself, and many times he comes in his own chariot to pick you up and take you up to heaven. Therefore, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That might mean he's standing right next to your loved one 
in his own chariot waiting to take them home. I do know that sometimes they're taken around the earth and they do see the favorite places they had or lived in while they were on this earth. That does not always mean instantly in that second that they are in heaven, the world called heaven. On their journey back to heaven, they go, they pass through the universe and see places. And so that journey could take, there's no time in heaven, but on earth time, it could take a little while to get up there. If they've asked God to please take us by this place or that place or stop here for a minute. Sometimes they do appear to loved ones as they're leaving. There's too many encounters of that happening with very valid people who have seen their family members and all they do is wave to them and go. Uh, all this is up to the decision of the father himself. But I will tell you this. Yes, people have been raised to the dead, from the dead, even though they were dead for three days. Remember, Lazarus was dead for four days. And sometimes people actually call them back from heaven and they're not very happy. Uh, I have known of people on the operating table that died and their family members start yelling, I command your spirit to come back into your body in Jesus' name. And if, if that is approved by the Lord, they actually will come back in their body. And when they come to, they're alive again. We, we can't make those decisions ourselves, all right? Sometimes God actually has an assignment for them, not a job, but an assignment that will be a blessing and reward to them in heaven. And he just needs them there. You know, I can't answer all those questions, but I will answer hers. Sometimes, yes, they may go in and out of places or visit different people briefly. And so I, I don't know the whole understanding of that, why some people do and why some don't. Some just can't wait to get there. Some know that's where they came from, that's where their home is. And their hunger to be, you know, with the Lord or with the Father just supersedes everything else. And if, if you've ever been before the throne of God, you would understand why they just couldn't remain here. The love is so great coming from the Father for them or, or from Jesus himself. But I just want to encourage you, whether you see them or not, you're going to see them again one day. So that is my answer to that question. I, I, this person, I know you've answered this a million times, but they, they obviously really needed to hear this, and it's kind of coincides with the picture you chose to have behind you because oh. they want to know do our love it's Michelle and she hi wants Michelle to know, do our loved ones see us when can they see us that so is a very good like question explain <laughs> the picture that's behind you okay one minute no <laughs> I have swapped <laughs> <laughs> Don't you love live TV, right? I remember the Carol Burnett show, and every time something would go wrong, she would just make a joke about it, okay? So, I have reached the bottom of my drink and all the syrup. I just inhaled it all at one time. It was amazing. Dark chocolate with almond. Are you kidding? So, I think I've recovered from that. I am going to show you this picture. I mean, for some reason, or maybe we can just zoom in. Can we zoom in a little bit? Oh, that's my camera person, so I don't have to move it. It took. I will move this. Okay, if you take it off me for a second. This right here is a place in heaven, and that's why it was one of the illustrations in my first book. And we actually did have this painted by our friend, my illustrator, who actually did my books, all the illustrations. I did all the sketches, and they did the finished product. So this actually is a place in heaven. Now, it's not complete. Like, we didn't put all the angels flying back and forth. We didn't put all the masses in here. This is an opening in, in this building. It's called the portal. And everyone comes to heaven. They, in, their ha in heaven, they walk up a stairway. And they look down in this beautiful opening. It's just filled with the light of God. And when they look down, they can see you on earth. They are there for every birthday. Every graduation, every child being born, every time you or a family member gets saved, they don't miss it. They get to be a part of that. Uh, they go also up here to declare over you. If you don't know the Lord, they will actually declare that my family member will know the Lord, that they will be in heaven with me, that they will be, uh, they will be a living testimony to the saving power of Jesus Christ. They go there and declare that over all the family members that don't know the Lord, they will ask Jesus to sometimes send gifts to you. 
And so this is, this is allowed for everyone who comes to heaven. They're allowed to go there whenever they want to, to declare on every year on your birthday, even though there's no time in heaven, they will go to this place. They look down over you, like from the ceiling, that as close as the ceiling of this room I'm in right now. They will see you from heaven. They will sing happy birthday to you. Uh, they throw rose petals over you that bring peace or joy or celebration over you. If you ever feel a rush of that, on your birthday, that means they're watching you from heaven singing happy birthday. They will go in heaven and get a gift for you to represent that year and they will put it in your own mansion. So when you get to heaven, you'll have a, a gift for every year you were apart. And that means every family member. That doesn't mean just one. People sometimes have thousands of gifts to open when they get there. So this is a beautiful place. These are columns. On this column, faces begin to show up when they're going to get born again. Okay, if you're going to be born again, it'll show up on this one and this one over here. And people will get a hold of other family members saying you need to hurry and get to a portal right now, one of these places, and you can watch your family member receive Christ. If faces appear on this side of this room, on the base of these columns, that means they're about to come home to heaven. And then they will tell people, make sure you get out to the gate because your family member is about to come home to heaven. So this is one of the ways that they get information about us on the earth. And one of the ways they can stay connected to their loved ones on the earth. So I hope this answered your question and everyone else's. Every place in heaven is just filled with the glory of God. So that was my answer. <laughs> and other people have also seen this. I'm not the only one who's seen these places in heaven. Um, let's just move that over there. And I will have a drink of my hint water. If you've never had it, it's awesome. No calories, okay? No, no poisonous sweeteners in here. This is really good. It's called Hint. It says it was birthed in California. Good things do come from California. <laughs> Our next question. Okay. Um, this is for, I believe it's pronounced Dane. And she would like to know, are aborted babies still babies or do they grow up? That is a wonderful question. And it's asked many, many times, Dane. So that is on the heart. Of anyone um, who who had lost a baby, miscarried a baby, or had a, a baby aborted somewhere in their life, and you know sometimes that wasn't the person's choice. Sometimes that was not the mother's choice, especially if they were really young. Some of them grieve for that baby. I can tell you that baby knows who you are. They're in love with you. They want you to come to heaven because when you come home to heaven, no matter how many years later, that very baby will be given to you. So if you ever have one aborted and it was your choice, repent of that, receive Christ, and that very baby who's been watching your life and declaring over you, when you go home to heaven, they will literally give you that little baby. And the good news is this, no diaper changes, no all-night feedings, no all-night crying. Those babies are filled with the life of God. They laugh, they play, they sing, they declare over you. God has all of the babies, okay? They have fallen in love with Jesus Christ. They actually hold a little ceremony where they can come up and sit on Jesus' lap and say, I receive you as my Savior. He grows little tiny flowers like this high in these meadows so the little babies can run out there and pick them. They wear them in their hair. They give them his bouquets to Jesus. They love him very much. So your baby is in the best hands ever. And so they will stay little babies, and this is the way the Lord made it. Whatever age that mother of that baby sees their child, that is the age they will be when they come home to heaven. So if you see your little child always like three or four, when you get to heaven, that is the age they will be. If you see them seven or eight, they're going to be that age. If you see them as a teenager, they will be that age. You get to finish raising them. When they discover the gift God put in them, whether it's a baseball player, an interior designer, a florist, a farmer, that passion that's in them, that he put them, he made them that gift. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights. We all have a natural gift that is given to us by God. And when you get to heaven, you get to use that amazing gift to bless everybody there. So they did not miss their ultimate destiny. Your gifts are without repentance, and he will not take them away because when you come home to heaven, he has prepared all of your property and your mansion to use that gift to bless everybody. So all those little babies will be waiting for you to come home. 
and make sure you name them. I always tell people that uh, if those babies don't have a name, the angels who care for them in the nurseries will name them with a little nickname. But if you decide to name your baby, you got to pick a, a boy name or a girl name unless you know what you know what the gender was of that baby. You pick a name and you say, Father, I have named my baby. He will call for that very baby, hold it on his lap and say, your parent just named you. And then they have a big party. And then from that point on, they use that name in heaven. So you know what? Heaven is all about keeping families together. So I hope that blesses you. Okay, this is a, um, this is a pretty serious question. but And I know you've answered it before, but like I said, there are some new people on here. So um, this is from Chris. And um, the question is, do believers in Jesus who commit suicide go to heaven? That is also a very important question. I want to explain, first of all, the Father. This was so important to the Father. And I know, again, I'm going to just answer this. Why do I talk so much about the Father? Jesus asked me to. He came in person, face to face, and said, I'm going to introduce you to the Father. I want you to talk about the Father so he'll be known in the earth. And so, you know what? We all lived inside God, the Father. He is our true Father. And he is the one... He makes the decision in his own self who, who goes to heaven or not according to the circumstances. And he caught me up one time. He said, this subject is so important to me that I'm going to tell you my answer. Does anyone go to heaven if they commit suicide? He said, first of all, you're going to look the word up in the dictionary. I didn't know what the, the actual meaning was, but the meaning the dictionary says, the one I looked in says, uh, suicide is what is committed by someone who does makes an intelligent decision in their right mind to end their life. And the father said, not all suicides are not suicides. He said, in other words, what he's trying to tell me was, not everyone who ended their suffering committed suicide. They couldn't bear the, they couldn't bear the agony or the suffering of what they were going through. They wanted to end their suffering. He said, suicide is someone like a suicide bomber. You know, they intelligently plan it. They know what they're doing. They're in the right mind. Uh, there's no other circumstances around. It was their own choice knowing that they would die and stop living. That is the correct interpretation of suicide. Someone who commits what people call suicide, they're under horrible suffering, mentally, emotionally, physical pain, severe physical pain, till they cannot bear that suffering anymore and they're ending their suffering. That is not suicide. And those people that do that, that know Christ, they go to heaven. And then after that, explaining that to me, he took me to heaven three different times and showed me people who had ended their suffering, why they had ended their suffering, and why they were living in heaven. He said, I don't want my people to think that they're people who got caught off either into for, from an accident, a sickness, or a severe injury, whatever it was, a severe trauma that caused them to end their suffering. I, I do not want them to think that their loved one is in hell because they are not. And so that is what is in, I think that's in my second book. I think that was put in my second book, but I talk about it a lot. So if your loved one, especially that knew Christ, and they ended their suffering because of a trauma, they are in heaven. They're with the Lord in heaven. And I hope that brings you peace. I think we have time for just a couple more. Okay. Let's see. Now you know why this takes so long to explain because I, know, there are so many I will tell you the way God made me, there is something in me that he put in me that I have to help people understand. What is being said? I just, you know, I'm not going to mention two words to you, yes or no. You're going to get a detailed explanation. This question is is more for uh, your 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 staff here at One Quest. Oh, to it's help, from one to help us a, out. It's not from one of us. Okay, I thought hey, my staff are turning in questions. We get these phone calls and emails almost every day. Any hint? This is this is from uh, a hint from from Dick. <laughs> Any hint when Revealing Heaven Book 3 will be coming out? Oh, I know you hear that all the time. And I have many times told you that is God's, <laughs> that's his choice. It's like nobody knows when Jesus is coming until the Father decides. 
Nobody knows when book three is coming until the father decides. I will explain why he is having me wait. By the time you're done with those three books, you should have so much revelation what heaven is, what is life like there, what happens when somebody dies, uh, all different situations, what is the army like, what is heaven, you know, what goes on, what is life in heaven, what are places that are in heaven. And then you're going to get things like, in number three, like what does a, a human soul look like? How did God design it? Why does that operate that way? How can I make it prosper? What happened the third day in hell when Christ wasted hell? On the third day when he rose from the dead, what happened when he spoiled principalities and powers? That will be an illustration in that book. So there's a lot of deep illustrations and deep revelations that will be in book three. It will be worth waiting for. However, all of my CDs and DVDs have many of the revelations that are not in those in those in those two books nor will they be in book three so make sure you're getting all of the revelation you know you can get the cds dvds we charge as little as possible for our cds and just in case you're asking they will be put in mb mp3 <laughs> and mp4 and mp4 and you know what i don't know what any of those mean I only know people get really happy when I talk about them. God did not create my soul. By the way, your soul has layers. Don't fill it with clutter. I can't let soul clutter get in here. I am not going to go take, you know, I can't go take classes on how to become a mechanic. That's not going to work. It just doesn't mix, okay, well with revelation. And so if you are focusing on something in your life, I would encourage you, Fill your soul with that. Make sure God's in there. Make sure his word is in there. But you don't necessarily need to know every gossip column. You don't need to read astrology. Please don't do that, okay? It is not good, okay? The zodiac is not a good thing. It's just not. You don't need your palm read. I'm going to throw it in here. It's free. Don't get your palm read. Don't go to a seance. That is hell. Don't seek out a medium or a psychic. That is not God. God used prophets and prophetesses and revelators. He does not use psychics. They may have a gift, but they don't know it belongs to God or they wouldn't call themselves that. I love them all and I'm praying for them, but these are all free tips to you, okay? Don't let witchcraft get in your life. It will mess up the layers of your soul and you need to keep that clean. Amen. <laughs> Book three will be written and finished when he wants it done. Before book three probably is ever finished, my first movie script will probably be out. Um, of course, we're going to be a part of the, one of the resurrection movies. I've talked about that forever, but since this is the taking of Hollywood, God is taking Hollywood before he lets those scripts be taken to Hollywood. I want to encourage you, no matter what you think or what you hear from there, just like the whole Trump thing, God has chosen to take Hollywood. That doesn't mean every one of them are going to be born again overnight. It just means he's going to start putting light in their soul and many of them will turn to him and what is in your soul is what you will produce. So look forward to a much better life and roll up your rapture rug, stick it in the closet, get your crown on. One more? One more. Okay. Um, how, this is from Jennifer. Hi Jennifer! From another Jennifer. Hi Jennifer! <laughs> How do we learn what our natural gift is if we don't know yet? Most people should have already had a hint. The easiest time to figure out what your gift is is when you're young. Ask your mother or father, what did I do when I was little? What did I do all the time when I was five? What did I think about? What did I want to watch? Did I ever like, did I ever want to be a cowboy? And that's all I talked about. I wanted to be around horses. You wanted to go horseback riding. Then you wanted to ride them. You want to do barrel racing. It is very clear. That would be a gift. 
That would be your gift. If you drummed on everything, I know one of my grandsons is a drummer. And we knew that when he was a year and a half old. How do we know? Everything that went in his hands, he drummed with them. He'd go outside on the hedge in the bushes and he'd pull sticks off and he would drum them in the restaurant. He'd take the straws in the restaurant and drum on things. It was his passion. It's what your passion is. Whether it's dance, interior design, if it's being a creator of witty ideas, if it's building roads or buildings, if it's designing whatever. Uh, it's going to be, it may not be creative, but it's still a gift. If it's just to love people, that is a tremendous gift. If it's to run rodeos, you'll be running rodeos in heaven. If it's design amusement parks in heaven, you'll design amusement parks. That's why there's so many things to do up there. Your natural gift is most important. Train up a child in the bent, in the way I made them, and they will not depart from that. Do you know what that means? That means if you identify your child's gift that God made them to be, they will never run out into the world trying to figure out who they are. And by the way, that scripture is not talking about a spiritual gift. In heaven, you don't use spiritual gifts. They don't have the fivefold ministry. There, there's people up there that are still talking about the things that went on when they were in the ministry, but they're probably golfers. They could be golfers, boaters, fishers. Uh, they could be all kinds of, it usually whatever those person's hobby is, is usually what their gift is. Most people, if you can't figure it out, it's probably not your job. Aren't you glad about that? And sometimes you can have more than one. There but are there multiple. There's one that's more prominent. prominent than the others because I have more than one. There so are multi. Oh, I'm a photographer too. Isn't that something? We both have the same gift. Our <laughs> most prominent gift is photography. How do we know? It is our passion. We don't care where we are. We're taking pictures. Put us by an old stump for five hours. Yep. Isn't that true, Jen? An old barn. Rusty barn. Falling down barn. Are you kidding? We love that stuff. Uh, we, we also love the beauty and the splendor part, but it doesn't matter. It's our passion. We won't take one picture of something. We'll take a hundred. Why? It's our gift. In heaven, we will both be photographers because that is what God made us. He sent us to this earth as photographers. All this extra stuff is assignments. Those are commissions that were given. But photography to this day is still our passion. And so it's what your passion is. It's what you spend your extra money on. If you could do a, do a job, if you could do that as a job and make money on it, what would you pick? The thing that gave you the most pleasure, that was exciting, you are passionate about that thing and most parents will think well that may not make much money so maybe they don't let you <laughs> all right you're making me laugh now okay that was my last question but your well, gift no, i have one more I have one i'm, I'm going to say that. where is that no that's mine nope nope that's mine give it give it give it wait i want to I no i want to push it okay i want to push it <laughs> okay but my Christmas present. This is the question, and this has been going around, and it pertains to what the the button you're about to push. Yes. Because <laughs> there is slander going on about Vice President Pence, because you know everybody has heard you say that he will be the next president. He will. Well, there is slander saying that he is done some very bad things and I won't tell you what they're saying because I know you don't need that image but what do you think of that what do I think about all the lies being told especially on CNN what do I think that is such fake news you fake news listen you fake news you fake news fake news fake fake news fake news come on you are fake news Okay, you fake, you fake news. Fake news. CNN, everyone else is there blasting, wrongfully accusing, trashing people that God has picked for things. Why do you think hell is blasting them? You don't ever hear about the people who are wicked and actually doing things, do you? Because hell doesn't like righteousness and goodness. He doesn't want, the enemy does not want God to have his plan. Well, this is what we think about you. Listen, you're being rude. You're fake, you're fake news. You're fake news. Stop being rude. You're fake news. Yes, and you are going down, fake news, because one day, even the world will get tired of hearing that one subject. Can't you actually give the real news going on in this world? You are... That is such fake news. 
There you go. That is my answer. You fake news. I'll push it one more time. Listen, you fake news. You fake news. So don't listen to them, people. All right? <laughs> Get it from the horse's mouth. Don't believe every negative thing out there being said about people who God has chosen for things. You pray for them. Pray for the bashers. But you know what? Those bashers don't know what they're doing because they are also... Fake news. Fake, fake news. Fake news. There you go. I got my fake news button, and you're, you're probably going to get tired of hearing that because I am so tired and fed up with the fake news who think they run this world and control people's lives and feed them lies. They can't even be healed themselves. So God help them all. Yes, we are against the fake news. We're against lies and twisted things that are not true. And if we investigated all the fake news, boy, people would all be saying, Come on, you are fake news, okay? you fake, you fake news. God help them all. And that is the end of our Q&A session. And where can they go after? Oh. If they want to hear more? If they want to hear more, go to where, Jen? <laughs> we oh. are going to do podcast number 28 We're going to, this. Yeah, and we will. <laughs> you will answer a few more questions on there. On the podcast. So uh, we're going to end our Facebook Live. I love doing this. This is a lot of fun. And I, I thank you all the contributors that you gave questions. All those who did not get them answered. We're going to start writing them down. Not me, but we will have somebody actually type them down so we can keep them. We're going to replace finally the stuff that are on our websites. They're going to be upgraded. We, we've already got them on new servers to make them more stable. So many people hit them ordering those calendars. I'm telling you, it was crazy. It actually made them crash. It did all kind of crazy things. We've now got that stable. And also, catcur.com. That's where people go to give to me. We, we've had so many people trying to give to me. And we didn't have a strong server for that one either. It has all been fixed. So you can revisit those places. Uh, we appreciate talking to you. And you know what? It's okay to be funny. You know what? There's so much humor. Everybody says God has a sense of humor. Right. You really have no idea. But you're going to find out, especially when he starts doing stuff to the... Fake news. I will see you later. Go to our podcast site, right? Yes. Uh, and you can get more. Automatic Cat Curve Revelation Realm. Um, can you just kind of like, before we go, just pray a blessing over everybody Um even people who have started new businesses. I know you did the little short video in, in I did. Heaven. Yes. You know, if you could just kind of like pray over. Yeah, God, right now I just pray over all of your sons and your daughters, God. And right now, especially all those who stepped into the marketplace. God is encouraging believers to go into the marketplace. That's where you put things out there and sell them, make them available, whether it's services or goods you know, products, whatever it is. God is downloading witty ideas and inventions by the thousands around this world. And he especially wants the body of Christ to step into that place. You will impact so many lives in the marketplace, in the business world, more than you actually can. Uh, even in your everyday church, you will have doors open that you can share Christ with people using your gift. Also, he's going to open doors for our gifts to actually be used to make money with. How about that? I'm not talking about us. I'm talking about everyone else out there. Um, that he has a plan for you. And so, God, I ask you to bless and prosper those who are stepping out into the marketplace, God. Let them have the right connections. Let them have great staff who will hold them up in prayer, who will joyfully celebrate having a job in an amazing place with a believer, God. Bring them uh, people who have money to invest in it. Bring people to buy their products, God. Let that let your, you will highlight their place and their spot on the internet. If it's on the internet, if it's on the street, in a building, whatever, God, we ask you to highlight that. Send the host of heaven to protect and watch over them and let them prosper even as their soul prospers. I bless them all and release the life of God. I ask God, show them all, everyone watching, your goodness because you love them. We love them. We thank you for them, Father. May the host go with you.